Welcome to Tricky Tricks number three, how to make an educated guess in math. I'm going to give a very brief intro and then we're going to get right to work. But first, I want to stress that on the math, you want to develop what I call answer choice awareness. Read your answer choices, look at them, analyze them even for patterns you see. Use them to help guide your work. If you see a pi in there, we know we're going to be working with the circle formulas. If you see a root two, maybe a 45, 45, 90 special right triangle, a root three, maybe a 30, 60, 90. Anyhow, the answer to have clues as to how to get into the question. Furthermore, please do watch your signs when choosing your answer choice. I cannot tell you how often I see in my tutoring experience students uh, arrive at the answer of negative three and then just carelessly bubble in three, right? Three and negative three are not the same. So do please watch your signs. So the key to making an educated guess is doing a little work on the problem, any work at all, half the question, a quarter of the question. Once you have a little headway, many answer choices will fall by the wayside. So even if you seem lost or confused at first glance, please write something down, jot down your ideas, do a little work. Something will happen. You will see a pattern in the answer choices that allows you to make a smart guess. So we're going to take a look at an actual College Board question, uh, a number 20, uh, so one of the more difficult math questions, uh, a geometry perimeter question in a moment. And then in the last uh, two examples, I am going to pursue a little bit more this idea of making an educated guess by analyzing the patterns in the answer choices. Okay, important video. Pay close attention. Let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at this question. We have a semicircle with a radius of 6, so from S to R is 6. And it tells us that the length plus the width of rectangle ABCR is 8. Okay, so that means if I travel from A down to R, and then add if I travel from R to C, right? So the length and the width, that distance is 8. I'm going to write that out here, but that does include both of those lines. And it wants to know the perimeter of the figure SACT, so this awfully shaded region. Uh, my apologies for the ghetto uh, shading. I'm working on it. So what do we know, right? Well, let's just sort of briefly sketch uh, in, in a different color here our, our trip. We're going to go from here on this little SA, then we're going to travel this diagonal, right? And then this little CT, and then on the way back, of course, we'll do this sort of quarter circle. Does that make sense? It's a quarter circle. All right, so maybe um, you know we're confused, but the, the idea is we just have to get going. So why don't we start with figuring out the length of ST, right? Because notice the answer is given in two parts, and always be aware of your answer choices, right? Keep your eye on them. I, I notice we have some a, a pi element on, on the right-hand side and then uh, an integer on the left. So let's start with trying to figure out what the quarter circle is. Well, the circumference of a circle, of course, is 2 pi r. Uh, if our r is 6, uh, that comes to 12 pi, correct? So that would be to travel all the way around a full circle. Um, and we only want a quarter of that, right? You know, we only want the quarter circle of 12 pi, which comes out to 3 pi. So here is where smart guessing starts. Look at our three pi options, right? We have three of them. If you are to make a guess at this point, you will definitely choose A, B, or C. And you are advised to do so, to make a guess when you've eliminated two, right? Six pi would have been a full half circle, and we don't want that. But maybe you want to go a little further and make a, a further educated guess. You know, maybe you're having trouble seeing what this diagonal is. But we do know if we traveled all the way, let's sort of pick a new color here, all the way from S, right, down to R, 
and then all the way over there. Well, that's 12, right? Uh, not quite drawn to scale, but it would be 6 and then 6 because those are two radii, right? So we, we're not going to go 14 if we're going a shorter route, right? Cutting from S and then from A over across the diagonal of the rectangle of C. Right? So 14 is going to be too big. And so that would be out of the, the, the running. You see, now we just have it down to 2. And, and you know, one of those is, is definitely right. And so you want to make a guess at this point. Um, maybe you do a little bit more sleuthing. You figure out, well, if I travel all the way from S to T, you know, and it's 6 plus 6, that's 12, right? Well, then I can subtract this distance that was given, this 8. Uh, that is the distance from A to R uh, plus R to C. In other words, the length and width of the rectangle. Right, so let's see. That gives us 4. And what is 4? Four? 4 is the sum of this part and this part, right? That's 4. So, you know, think about it. Do we think AC is, is you know, double that 4 or, or a little bit more? You know, it seems to me to be a little bit more. Um, so again, without going all the way to the answer, I'm trying to show how along the way, if you do a little bit of work, and use the process of elimination, you can safely and smartly eliminate choices and arrive, well, at this point we're sort of arriving at B, which is, in fact, of course, the correct answer. I want to point out one other thing before showing the actual solution to the question. Notice how 10 shows up twice. I'm going to go ahead and put that in a different color. We have 10 here. And 10 also showed up here in one of our eliminated answer choices. That is a good sign uh, for B being the correct answer. And as we'll look at more closely in the next two examples, often, very often, the correct answer for a math question on the SAT is the one that shares the most elements with the other answer choices. What does that mean? Well. 10 plus 3 pi shares the 10 with answer choice D. It shares the plus sign with all five answer choices. And it shares the 3 pi with uh, two other answer choices. In other words, there's three 3 pi's and just two 6 pi's. So uh, this may seem a little uh, 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 unscientific. And in fact, it is. Uh, but I do want you to remember this rule, that the correct answer on, on the SAT very often shares the most elements with the other answer choices. Think about that. Okay, but before um, we look at some other examples that address that, uh, uh, that little secret, I, I do want you to see the actual solution to this question. So we know from S to A and from C to T is 4. All right, 4 here, right? and that also includes this, right? So basically all we need to solve it is this. What is AC? Does anybody see any way to solve for AC? Let's take uh, this, this sort of guessing uh, uh, method all the way and say, well, what if you had you know, proposed that this maybe was uh, from A to R was, was 5, right? So taking some of the 8, and maybe this was uh, 2. I'm sorry, that would be 3, right, to, to add up to 8. Then maybe you could do Pythagorean theorem and estimate that diagonal. Uh, and in fact, breaking up the 8 into um, two numbers whose sum is 8 and doing Pythagorean theorem does uh, give you a pretty good estimate and, and does again get you that much closer to 10. Does anybody see what the actual solution is? We know that we need um, 6, right? We know we need 6 more to get to our 10. So we do know because we're working backwards that this diagonal ends up being 6. Uh, from A to C. Does anybody see why? I'm just going to give three seconds. You can pause it if you want to try to figure out the puzzle. It's because diagonals and rectangles are equal. And look, this is the other diagonal. And that, my math friends, is another radius, which is equal to 6. So because uh, this diagonal from R to B, which is not shown, is equal to 6, so is AC. You know, this is uh, one of the test writer's great tricks. They, they won't quite show something that would have been quite helpful. Uh, so anyhow, there is the answer. Uh, we can kind of put a box here. It ends up being the 3 pi 
3 pi plus 10. Uh, but more importantly, I want you to see how you can use um, sort of half solving, uh, or in this case even just a, a third of the question or a quarter of the question was solved before we were able to make a uh, educated guess. Okay, in the next two examples, I do want to revisit this idea of more often than not, the correct answer on the SAT is the one that shares the most elements with the other answer choices. So what does that mean? Well, let's talk about the various elements of these answer choices. I see three x squareds, right? So x squareds kind of in the lead, yeah? And only two two x's. Um, I see three four y's, you see that? Right? And, and then a 4 and a y, which don't pair up at all. So, so far it looks like these two, right? Well, what is the difference between those two? Uh, it's the plus and minus, and in fact there are three pluses and just the two minuses. So see how B, all elements of B were circled in this little exercise. And so B is the answer choice that in fact shares the most elements with the other answer choices. Right. And so that is the right answer. Think about that. I want you to kind of review this concept. Now, this isn't uh, how I recommend you take the exam. <laughs> Obviously, you should work out the math and come to the actual solution. But when in doubt, when running out of time, when making a final choice between two, this, choosing the answer choice that shares the most elements with the others is a pretty nifty trick. All right, let's look at just one more example. Let's say you have this uh, uh, question or these five options. You know, we're not even concerned about the question. We're just sort of looking at how to analyze answer choices and their patterns. Well, they all start with two, so that doesn't help anybody. Uh, in here, I see we have three uh, negatives. So it looks like the negative is the big winner. Uh, I'll go ahead and circle all the twos. They're all just shared. So uh, it looks like we can safely roll out these two. They don't have the, the minus sign. And now, well, they all have a square root, but this is the only one with a coefficient in front of its square root, right? These two um, do not have a coefficient. And in fact, three of them don't have a coefficient. I'll sort of circle the lack of coefficient in front of the square root term. Right, so that knocks E out. And then we're down to just the choice between root 2 and root 3, which at this point is fairly obvious because four of the questions have a root 2 and only the one root 3, so A's out. And our final choice then is B, right? That box um, is circling four elements of a question that were circled because they, in fact, shared uh, uh, that element with the other answer choices. So think about it. It's pretty uh, uh, clever. It's not how I would recommend answering all of the questions, uh, but it's definitely worth the effort to analyze your answer choices in this way and to sort of raise your awareness about how all of the answer choices on the math have patterns. And if you can begin to recognize and be aware of those patterns, you'll be that much closer to the right answer. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, how to make an educated guess uh, video, and I will see you in the next lesson.